As a family, we love to adventure. In fact, we believe that adventure truly is a state of mind. Recently, my son Jesse and I took to the sky to cross the two miles of open water in paramotors in order to land on our small island home for the first time. We've got Jesse coming in over here. Okay, so welcome to uh, another little mini adventure. This one, I'm gonna do some paramotoring. Uh, we're up in North Wales. We're going to take off on the mainland, fly out to our little island, try and land on it, and then fly back. For those of you that don't know, paramotoring is epic fun. Uh, this is something we've done all over the world with great friends. Uh, all you need, a parachute, we'll get that out in a sec, and an engine. When you're learning at the beginning, uh, it definitely doesn't look easy and isn't easy. Don't rush the progression of learning. Have your wipeouts on the ground. If there's doubt, if there's no doubt, stop, uh, fly another time, and then go for it and have fun. We're going to get the wing out and show you a little bit of this, and then we'll fire up the engine, and then we'll take off. Okay, helmet, always a good idea. Today as well, I'm flying with Jesse, my son, 17 years old, legend of a man. <laughs> Annoyingly, he does all these things now better than me. <laughs> Bit, although you have been doing a lot. When did you first start messing around with canopies and stuff, do you reckon? I am pretty young. I never was paramotor since 14, I think. Yeah. Yeah. When you enjoyed it. In the desert, camping. Yeah, 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 exactly. And Mama was asleep. <laughs> and we got up early out of the tent and said, this is perfect time. There's tunes as far as you can see. And uh, we, had the, we had the machines with us. And I just remember you take it off and Mama would poke your head and go, what's he doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But you had a sweet life. and you want to start, remember there are enough great people in this board who will love and encourage you and, and help you just have fun because ultimately this is all about being safe but having fun. That's actually a really nice takeoff. You know, gave him a little bit of hang because it's quite a strong wind for a forward launch. Two ways of launching on the forward like that, or back, and you're facing it up the next turn. Uh, if it's windy like that, you're going forward, somebody can give you a hand or something. Then as soon as it's up, you've got a really nice control. Well done, Jesse. Okay, time to go, John. There's always an element of risk when paramotoring, but never more so than when flying over the sea. Drowning is the biggest cause of paramotoring fatalities and being strapped to a heavy engine in water can be a recipe for disaster. An engine out for us midway across would be bad. Okay, so down on the island, check this out for a view. We've got Jesse coming in over here. Lovely landing, sea breeze, clean air over the cliffs. And we've landed right on the top here. Now this is Jesse's first time ever landing on the island. Uh, definitely an exciting moment for him. But he's got it, sweet Jesse, well done. of the land and you're committed to the sea but we climbed up high what we did was climb up to make sure we had enough height so even if we had an engine failure we would either make the island or we'll be able to get back but to actually, the mainland. I had height and I'm with the wind I easily make it here. You flew so well. Thank you. So good and beautiful landing, beautiful takeoff. Well done. 
Should we take, take off, fly back? Yeah. Uh, great flight, Jesse's coming back. We're clear of the water. Good job, him. We managed to land on the island. Ah, oh, so fun. I oh, love it. Nah, nah. Safe flight is a good flight. Nice landing into winds, good stable conditions. Buzzed a few people on the beach and uh, happy days. I'm never entirely happy to be Jesse down safely, but he is looking good. And for me, it's so fun to be able to fly with. Uh, with my son and to be able to fly with great friends and people I love. It's a great privilege and it's the ultimate uh, playground up in the sky. So yeah, come and join us, paramotric. But be safe, do the training, and if there's doubt, there's no doubt, fly and I'm okay. Take care. While we are here at the top of these cliffs, you can see it is a long way, lowering yourself over this edge. And once you're over the edge here, it will feel better. I'm a bit nervous. I don't think I paid enough attention to the safety briefing. I don't really know what I'm doing at all. <laughs> Are you holding on to the end? So at the moment we're on our little island hideaway in North Wales and of course it being Wales it's raining, but if it ain't raining, it ain't training. We have learnt over a lifetime of living up here to not be scared of a bit of bad weather. We've learned that skin is waterproof. So today we're gonna do a little episode where I teach Jesse, our eldest son, who's 17 years old now, how to rappel off some of our big cliffs that we have here. And we have the most amazing cliffs on this island, uh, up to like 150 foot sheer drops. Um, and they're imposing because you've got the sea underneath you and Jesse has grown up, so he's seen me for many years climbing up them and often abseiling and rappelling down them. Uh, he is really pretty fearless when it comes to heights. We've got Jesse coming in over here in terms of paragliding and base jumping and skydiving but he gets really pretty scared when it comes to climbing and I've had some classic adventures with him over the years in the Alps and out here climbing where you know this boy who I know is fearless in so many ways gets really scared so I said today we're actually going to teach you how to repel safely and you're not going to be scared. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about how to make repels safe, how to anchor it uh, effectively, and the sort of things we don't normally have time to go into on a running wild show because everything's happening so fast and the edit gets so fast. But we're going to talk a little bit about how to secure the ropes, secure yourself to the rope and repel safely and we're gonna to get to see Jesse looking scared. So having said all of that, would you like to meet the man himself? Here we go. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how are you feeling? I'm a bit, I'm a bit scared, to be honest. Well, I was I... just looking at the rain thinking, what if I slip? It's a valid point, and, a, and another risk yeah. we're gonna mitigate to make sure you do this safely. So how's it different to when you jump off things together with me when we do all this other stuff? I'm always thinking, always in my mind, why was the rope snab, so why I slip here, let go of the, the repelling thing. But it's the it's same just... as when you skydive, what happens if you didn't pull your chute, you know? Yeah, but that's easy, that's easy, it's just got one thing to think about. Because you're familiar yeah, got with a million. It, yeah, probably. Well, we're going to talk about that, the key is rope protection, where it goes over the edge, protecting that, your anchor points, and then not letting go of that rope, you know? You've yeah. got to, you're in charge of your own life, don't let go of the rope. Although we are going to put a backup on, so you're going to see all of this stuff, how to do it uh, on this episode. You ready? Up it is. Okay. Okay, so Jesse's going to get his harness on. Meanwhile, we are here at the top of these cliffs. You can see down here, it is a long way. It's a good 150 foot straight off the edge of this. And what we're going to do is show how we make it safe to do. It looks scary, 
it's totally doable. And as I said, you know, for Jesse, this is something he finds scary, even though he is so fearless in so many other ways. It's one of the things I really love in people when they are great adventurers, but they're also they're honest about what they find difficult. Because the truth is, heights are scary and heights are dangerous. And you only make one mistake that's catastrophic once, and the consequences are obviously big. The most important factors when you're dealing with heights like this and descending is, first of all, do you really need to do this? Is this your only way down? If the answer is there's another way, find it. Always go the path of least resistance when it comes to the wild. Uh, the goal for the good survivors is to take minimum amount of risk. If you do need to do it, this is your only way down. Key things, your anchor points. No good having grey harness, grey ropes if your anchor points are weak. We've got an anchor in here, you can see it's a bolt. One in here, one in here. Uh, I've used these up on these cliffs for years. I know these are strong. Uh, the principle is you want a minimum of two anchor points that you are 100% confident with. Sometimes you're absolutely sure it's strong going that way, but if you pull it up, it's gonna be much weaker. But people say, but you're not pulling it up, the forces are going that way. That's true, but if you think about when you start to repel, you're stood up at the start, you're putting your weight onto it, and that is upward force. So you've got to make sure your anchor points are secure, not only forces going that way, but also forces going upwards. Uh, I'm being doubly, doubly safe on this. I've backed it up here with a line that runs all the way back to the base of our wind turbine. So I've got this backed up at three places. Got a sling here that is equalized between that bolt and this bolt and the rappel direction is going to be straight off here. So I want to put a nice big figure of eight into this. Okay, if you look here now, the angle, 90 degrees from this sling to that anchor point that sling to that anchor point. 90 degrees is good. Once it gets more than 90 degrees, uh, the strength of that is going to decrease. So 90 degrees is great. And then we're gonna secure the actual rappel rope from here straight off the edge. So anchors are good. The next important factor in rappelling, keeping it safe, is protecting your rope. The vulnerable points are where the rope runs from here over sharp edges like this. You know, you can have the best anchors in the world, but if that is really sharp, you're putting a lot of weight on it, it actually doesn't take much to cut through uh, these ropes. So you've got to put some form of protection there. So what we're going to use for this is what's called a rope pro. And we put that around the rope. That goes over the edge and just protects it over the sharp bits like that. And we make sure we tie that then to the top of the rope so that stays in position. Okay, so we're going to secure the two lines we're going to rappel off here onto that sling. Red is danger. We're going to screw that up. Very important, always check your screw gates are done up. And then that rope is good to go off the edge. Helmets obviously important, especially where you've got loose crumbly rock like this. You bring little bits down uh, from a height that can, it can kill you, it can also knock you out. If you're knocked out, then you're not co controlling the rope and then you're in trouble. So always wear a helmet if there's any risk of falling rocks. And the final thing is make sure you know your rope is on the ground at the bottom. Too many fatalities of people rappelling clean off the end of a rope. So whether it's somebody, if you can't see it in an overhang, make sure someone's down there to spot it. Uh, and if visually you can check that that rope is on the ground and then you are good to go. Okay, so we move back from the edge. We're on a stacked rappel, which yeah. means we're on the same lines, but one above the other. So I'm gonna go first. When yeah. I get to the bottom, I will be your safety. I'll get three strong pulls of the rope and that means you're good to go. The awkward bit is going over the edge initially. So even if you're on your belly a bit, lowering yourself over, Keep that hand on that brake hand all the time, okay? Yeah. And uh, bags of confidence and you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, look, what you notice here we've done, we've brought the descender device right out here. This is called a Mantis. 
and that's your, what breaks the rope, you know, gives you that friction. And if you're the lead person, you have a prusik, it means you can have your prusik from your strong point here to the rope, and then it's not all getting tangled. Does any of that make sense? No, I didn't catch a word. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we're good to go. This, ultimately, though, this is about Jesse's in at the deep end. He's in that fog of adrenaline of, like, fear. But part of this tutorial is for you guys to understand this is why we have that rappel device away from you. So you can put the prusik. Again, old school, we used to put prusiks in our leg loops. Uh, but really, those leg loops aren't rated. So now we put a prusik off our strong point and having that mantis and that descender a little bit away from your body stops prusiks and descending devices getting confused and getting caught up with each other. Okay, happy to do it. Helmet's yeah. on, we good to go? Okay, champ, so this is gonna be the awkward bit. Lowering yourself over this edge. Wash your fingers with it. And once you're over the edge here, it will feel better, okay? And then hand goes onto the prostate. Nice wide stance. That's a good wide stance. Yeah, don't be too vertical. If you're vertical, you're gonna slip down. So we're leaning back, okay? Nice wide stance like that with your feet, okay? And you'll feel three strong pulls and that means you're good to go, yeah? And then once you're on it, just take your time and enjoy it. Okay, it's gonna be good. I'm a bit nervous, but the you know, weather conditions are Optimal. Yeah, perfect. And luckily, someone's right here to help. <laughs> Fun one for me. I get to take so many amazing, you know, Hollywood people and stars away on adventures and to repel with them. But actually, really fun for me to be able to take Jesse, my son. Uh, he's watched this for so many years, and um, you kind of learn so much by watching, but so much more by actually doing and uh, it's fun for me as well to see him really pretty scared because I do a lot of adventures with him and he's always pretty fearless but with this he's quite nervous and, uh, and I like that shows a bit of humanity okay yeah I still I don't think I paid enough attention to the safety briefing I don't really know what I'm doing at all <laughs> So on the ground, I'm going to move away from the edge, in case of any falling rocks. The thing is, I haven't even seen him, so I don't even know if he's okay. He's kind of winging it. Once I was safe and secure on the ground, I gave the rope three strong tugs to let Jesse know it's now his turn to descend. Okay, are we all good? Are you holding on to the end? I've got it, I've got it. If anything happens, I've got it. Okay, okay. How are you feeling, Jesse? <laughs> Not great, if I'm honest. Like, I feel like this is the worst part. Okay, am I all good? Oh. You're a long way down. So, reach the bottom, both of us safe, smile on his face. What was the scary bit of that? I mean, 
I thought going over the edge was bad. Yeah. And then I kind of reached that pretty gnarly looking overhang. And that, that was worse. <laughs> but from there, it was smooth sailing. Yeah, smash it. You did so well. So there you go. The principles of rappelling. Make sure the rope reaches the floor. Make sure your anchors are bomb proof. Make sure your rope protection is good. And uh, make sure you've got a backup plan if the, your uh, Percy or Guiding's hand comes off the rope, whether it's bell ringing from underneath or if you've got some experience to know how to set up a prusik. Um, but good job. Down Thanks. safe, all happy, all alive. Smash it. Proud of you. Cool. So you're a pal of cliff.